Chapter 12. That's what it looked like. Wall to wall candy. Big piles of candy. The floor covered with candy. All kinds, all colors, all wrapped. A giant trick-or-treat supply for the rest of your life. Milk duds, sugar babies, Pez, Milky Way, Snickers, Dum Dums, Three Musketeers, Hershey bars, Swedish fish, Jujubes, Kit Kats, Twizzlers, Crunch bars, Twix, Tootsie Rolls, Mounds, Starburst, Smarties, Reese's Pieces, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, Payday bars, M&Ms, Almond Joy, Baby Ruth, Fifth Avenue, Mr. Good Bar, Rolos, Butterfingers, Caramello, Candy Dots, Hershey Kisses, Score Bars, Licorice Whips, Heath Bars, Raisinets, Mallow Cups, Charleston Chews, Chunkies, Clark Bars, Crackle, Whoppers, Sugar Daddies, Oh, Henry, Bit of Honey, Dove Bar, Good ba Goobers, Snowcaps, Junior Mints. We had all come down the kindergarten side, even Albert in his laundry basket and Luella holding Howard. So it was pretty crowded in the boiler room with all of us and all the missing kids. Anybody who had pockets in their costumes was stuffing them with candy, and anybody who didn't was welcome, Albert said, to borrow part of his laundry basket. That's really nice of you, Albert. You don't have to do that. Yes, I do. If I took all the candy for myself, I'd have to go to fat camp again this summer. I wish I had the Howard's stroller back. It has a big pocket at the back, and we could fill it up. I guess pilgrims didn't have pockets. <laughs> Neither do belly dancers, I said, but I didn't really care. It was almost enough just to be there in a sea of candy. Of course, you had to wonder where it all came from, but it was a lot easier to figure out where it didn't come from, which would be the PTA or Mr. Crabtree or the mayor. This was Charlie's idea, some kind of Halloween tooth fairy. I guess that sounded good to the first graders because when Mr. Crabtree showed up and yelled, where did all this come from? Missy Reed told him it came from the Halloween tooth fairy. It's a good thing Missy was a first grader and cute because Mr. Crabtree's ears turned red at the top the way they had when Ollie Herdman wrote, in Rond wrote on Rhonda Gallagher's turtle. This was a lot worse than that though and Mr. Crabtree's ears were a lot redder. After all, Rhoda could just pick up her turtle and get out of sight and then Mr. Crabtree could pretend that there wasn't even any turtle in the first place. But here were a lot of missing kids and the missing kindergarten slide in a room full of candy that had to be missing from somewhere. And Mr. Crabtree didn't know how to explain it or who to blame. Of course, neither did anyone else. Who to blame had never been a problem at Woodrow Wilson School. When something happened, you just looked around for the herdmans. But on Halloween night at Woodrow Wilson School, there weren't any herdmans around. Mr. Crabtree could have blamed Alice for the blackout, but by the time Alice lit herself up, there were already kids missing. When Mr. Crabtree canceled the rest of the Halloween party before anything else happened, he said, the PTA committee got stuck with 14 dozen donuts, so they blamed Mr. Crabtree for that. And Mrs. Wendell can blame the Ohio Light and Power Company for what she called Alice's brush with death. The police chief took charge of the candy in case it turned out to be stolen, but he said, he couldn't haul it off to the police station, and Mr. Crabtree said he couldn't leave it in the boiler room, so it all ended up where Halloween candy is supposed to end up, with the kids. The manager of the supermarket said he would never stock that much candy. You stock that much candy, you'll have stale candy. He was right, because that's what we had, stale candy. But you can still count stale candy. You can make piles of stale candy and trade for other kinds of candy. You can eat stale candy if you want to and your mother lets you. Stale isn't very important at Halloween. What's important is the amount. How many, how much. And we had more candy that Halloween than ever before or ever again, probably. Never again at Woodrow Wilson School for sure. That's what Mr. Crabtree said. No next year, he said, never again. This meant that we could go back to Halloween as usual, which was what we all really wanted in the first place. Why? Why do you want to run all over the neighborhood in the dark and try to keep your costume together and hang on to your trick-or-treat sack and your flashlight and then on top of everything else, stay away from the herdmans? Why? Yes, Charlie said. Yes, what? All that, even the herdmans. That's what Halloween is supposed to be. Good for you, Charlie, I thought. My father was still trying to get it all straight. You went down a slide into the boiler room. How did you happen to do that? We just followed Boomer, Charlie said. In his gorilla suit, Cecil added. Only, 
I knew it wasn't Boomer. 